Hurricane Irma's new deadly path of destruction. Now a worst case scenario for the state of Florida. A very strong Category 4 storm, possibly one of the worst storms Florida has ever seen. It's going to be catastrophic and you will not be safe if you have remained behind. Every Florida family must prepare to evacuate. Don't think you can ride out this storm. We are with the people of Florida and as you know, the Virgin Islands. Florida is as well prepared as you can be for something like this. A massive earthquake striking Mexico overnight. It's Mexico's strongest earthquake since 1985. There are reports of at least five deaths, including two children. <laughs> President Trump's decision to side with Democrats on the debt ceiling rippling across Washington. We had a great meeting yesterday with Nancy Pelosi and Senator Schumer. It was a very bipartisan meeting. He took party politics out of the equation and focused on what the American people expect of the White House. The president is a successful businessman who's not a politician. He's getting a good deal for the American people. We're different parties. We have different thoughts, different feelings, different ideas. But I think you're going to see a uh, much stronger coming together. It is 7 o'clock here in New York City and down in Florida as well. And we start with a Fox News alert. Hurricane Irma's new deadly path of destruction now, according to some, a worst case scenario for the state of Florida. Miami and the Florida Keys bracing now for a direct hit from the strongest hurricane in recorded history. Moments ago, the massive storm's death toll rose to at least 11. Uh, meanwhile, it's a violent fury, I guess you could call it, now triggering life-threatening storm surge warnings. Some areas could see a to 10 feet of water. So it's not just the wind, it's also the flood surge. Meanwhile, Governor Rick Scott ordering schools and hospitals and government offices to close their doors. Authorities warning millions not to gamble with this storm. They keep betting against Mother Nature that day's coming, they're going to lose. Don't even call 911 because nobody's going to answer the phone. And right now, Hurricane Irma is on the move, heading to the Bahamas, heading to Cuba, after whipping up on Turks and Caicos. That happened overnight. Irma is expected to arrive in the Florida Keys late on Saturday night. Griff Jenkins, or tomorrow night, I should say, Griff Jenkins is kicking off our team coverage live in Key Largo with the latest. Griff? Good morning. Well, we're starting to see a little bit of light here, but it's not going to stay this way for long as that storm approaches. And as you heard just in the intro, that Monroe County Administrator Roman Gestisi was saying that if you stay, don't call 911 because no one's coming for you. They are expecting uh, unprecedented devastation here, not only from wind, but because of the storm surge. And in fact, I want to quickly go to a fishing boat captain of 20 years, Matt Mikowski. Matt, you decided to get out. You're you know, born and raised in this area, why are you getting out? It's time. Uh, I waited this morning. I waited as long, like a lot of my friends. We've tried to wait till last minute to see if it was actually going to wobble a little bit or actually hit us. It's looking like it's going to be close enough now, so it's time to get out. And just so our viewers understand the significance, you know, you've gone through hurricanes here. What do you anticipate is going to happen here? Well, I mean, if it stays on the track it's going on, this is going to be complete devastation in this area. We're going to have a storm surge of somewhere around 12 feet, I believe. Uh, my neighborhood's only 8 feet above sea level. So with this, it's not going to be so much the wind that's scaring us out. It's the storm surge. And where will you go? I'm heading up to Miami. I have a house up there in Miami, and uh, we rode Andrew out in that house, and it's, it lasted pretty good. So we're going to go up there and hunker down. Have you thought about Andrew as this approaches, and what memories does that conjure? Yeah, if anybody out there has ever lived through Hurricane Andrew, you'll never forget it. It was a life-changing event for everybody here. We always joke around with, you know, hey, where were you during Andrew? So it's always fresh in our brains. I have not forgotten. It was a very devastating event at the time, being without power, seeing the neighborhood destroyed. Um, so, like I said, it's time to get out and time to hunker down. All right, get safe. Well, there you go, guys. Taking it from a lifelong resident, they're getting out. Less than 5%, about 5% of residents in the Keys remain. When he's going to my yeah, Maybe you can convince him to go yeah. a little farther north. Can you tell him to go north, get him a compass? They say you need to go farther north because the track of this is uh, probably going to hit there as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I saw it. I'd rather be here for it. If uh, I mean, I'd rather be up in Miami for it if it does come our way. I definitely don't want to be here. 
Yeah. And Matt has uh, lots of gas in his truck as well as a generator. But, uh, you know, for the old timers, and Matt's one of them here, there's a real sense. It's eerie, and there's a real sense of concern as uh, the worst is headed our way in about 24 hours. You are right about that. Yeah. It's not responsible to stay in Miami. No one's going to come for you. Somebody's going to risk their life trying to stay. A lot of people are going to be in Miami. It's uh, crazy. They, they cannot evacuate it's Miami. It's better than being in Key Largo, though. Small little island. Absolutely. The end of a barrier island. All right, uh, Janice, the track, if it took a right, that would be good. But right now, it looks like it is uh, heading right for where Griff was. Well, I think, you know, a lot of people look at these tracks, you know, moment by moment and say, well, it could move a little more to the west or to the east. east. And there's always a chance of error with these computer models. But I will tell you, they have come into such good agreement. And that's why people are waking up going, oh, my gosh, I should have gone because we are coming into this uh, dire situation, this potentially catastrophic scenario for the Keys and South Florida with 10 foot storm surge and incredible rainfall and the winds. I mean, the core of winds at 155 miles per hour, 75 miles center of the storm. So, you know, if you're 70 miles, uh, you know, in the path of the eye of the storm, you're going to feel those Category 4 winds. And by the way, a strong Category 4, just shy of a Category 5. I might make mention that there's a lot of warm water ahead of this storm, 90 degree temperatures, not out of the question to bring it back up to a 5. Uh, so don't let your guard down b by seeing a 4. It's not weakening. It is going to hit South Florida and the Keys as possibly one of the worst hurricanes they've ever had in their history. And so that's why people are have that sense of doom and Unfortunately, the worst case scenario is playing out right now. The worst of the winds and the rain and the surge are going to come uh, tomorrow night into Sunday morning. Back to you. All right, uh, JD, thank you very much. The cover of the New York Post summarizes it. Here comes Armageddon is the headline. Uh, given the fact of what's going on down there, it is a scary time for the folks in mm -hmm. South. And we haven't forgotten about everybody at Harvey. We know you're recovering. We know a lot of uh, a lot of these neighborhoods are getting reflooded, especially in the outskirts of Houston. Yeah. People, Houston's beginning to dry out, and it's not easy for them. But some can't even rebuild because they're still sometimes chest deep in water. Well, but a lot of those resources and a lot of those FEMA people have to go to Florida at least temporarily. Yeah. It's crazy. I said earlier in the show that my sister, she's a school teacher in Charleston, they haven't said that schools are closed yet. She wrote me, she said, actually, we have found out that schools are closed in Charleston through Tuesday. All right. Uh, be safe, everybody, and say a prayer for the folks down south. Meanwhile, Paul Ryan and Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell, we know earlier in the week, uh, one of them surprised the other two when the President of the United States made a surprising and shocking to many Republicans deal with the Democrats. Well, last night would have been great to have been a fly on the wall because the Speaker of the House sat down for a dinner with the president. That's right. Yeah, and he uh, sat down. This is the first time they're actually meeting since the president surprised many people in the Oval Office by listening to all plans and then saying, I'm going to side with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. I'm going to get $15 billion over to the people in Texas, and I'm going to raise the debt ceiling for three months because I want to clear the deck for the budget and for tax reform. When Carl Rove was on the radio with me yesterday from Austin, and he said the thing that bothers him about the deal was the surprise element of it. Uh, the suddenness of it that they didn't brief Republican leadership ahead of time. And that was one of the things that Senator Marco Rubio said. But don't uh, you think that's how the president is? The president even says, I'm used to going with my instinct. And so he wants deals done. And he goes right. with that gut feeling. And he's tired of, of Congress holding out and waiting so long. And I think the American people are frustrated. They keep taking recesses and breaks and don't get anything done. He's like, enough with that. I'm going to start talking to the Democrats. We're going to get things done quicker. Well, and Donald Trump is a business man and and when you've got a, a problem what do you do you call in all the parties and the president called in all the parties and reportedly you know the Republican plan was initially okay let's go for 18 months let's kick it uh, kick the can down past mm -hmm. the midterms apparently they went around on that then what about 12 months what about six months and then the finally the president just said I'm gonna well, cut to the chase let's just do a three-month deal to clear the decks to do taxes right. and also as we heard yesterday uh, to support the military because this is a time of great dynamic tension they needed around the world. And the funding was going to cut off and they're trying mm -hmm. to bulk up to continue to wipe out ISIS and obviously put resources into... Well, are you all uh, list people? I mean, are you a list person? Are you like, all right, got to get my kid into school, got to go buy supplies, got to do grocery shopping. I'm a list person. I got to check it all off and as soon as everything's done, then I can breathe and I can have a glass of wine at the end of the day. The president has a list and he's trying to check the on boxes. On Steve Bannon's wall, which is right. empty. <laughs> exactly. The office. The president's trying to check the boxes and he can't. 
And people were asking, is Paul Ryan, what was he furious? People were questioning whether or not he was mad at the president for going around and talking to the Democrats. And we talked to Mick Mulvaney just a minute ago, and he said when they when they had dinner last night, everyone wants to say they were angry. They weren't. They got along. And they, you know, Paul Ryan understands the president's a deal maker, too. Well, I just think also the country is tired of the division. Even if you think you're, if you're way right and you think everything you say is right and you're way left, I think the average person is tired of not getting anything done and everybody's standing on their sides. There's got to be a sense in this country if you lose an election, it doesn't mean you're out of business for those two or four years. I think the minority does matter, and in this case, it's the Democrats. But the question is, will Chuck Schumer say the president came to our side, took a lot of heat because of it, mm -hmm. now the budget's coming up, now the wall's got to be funded, immigration reform's got to be looked at, DACA's got to be addressed. Right. What does the president want? Why don't I take it a step further and start bringing people together? Well, we don't know exactly what the deal was. That, you know, we saw that picture of the president essentially embracing Chuck Schumer. We don't know exactly what else was in that particular deal uh, per se, but we what do, do know. Well, we don't know. If he said, okay, I'm going to give you the three months, which you want, mm -hmm. but you got to give me this down the road. We don't know what that Just deal like was. If I'll keep the dreamers in the country. Sure. You give me the wall. Apparently, the President of the United States yesterday was exuberant in the Oval Office because he had done something that was really popular with people on both sides. Forget about the Republican establishment. And speaking of the Republican establishment, Steve Bannon sat down with Charlie Rose, going to be interviewed. Uh, you'll see it all on 60 Minutes. Among the things, the juicy tip bits apparently Mitch McConnell told the president of the United States hey stop saying that drain the swamp stuff meanwhile mr. Bannon who is uh, as we played in the soundbite yesterday gonna be the president's wingman outside the White House he said his job taking on the establishment which does not like this president the Republican establishment is trying to nullify the 2016 election. That's a brutal fact we have to face. The Republican establishment. The Republican establishment. Wants to nullify the 2016 election. Trying to nullify the 2016 election. Oh. Absolutely. Who? I think, I think Mitch McConnell and to a degree Paul Ryan. They do not want Donald Trump's populist, economic, nationalist agenda to be implemented. It's very obvious. It's obvious as it's obvious as it's obvious as night follows day. You are attacking on many fronts people who you need to help you to get things done. They're not going to help you unless they're put on notice. They're going to be held accountable if they do not support the president of the United States. Right now, there's no accountability. They have totally. They do not support the president's program. It's an open secret on Capitol Hill. Everybody in the city knows it. Well, Speaker Ryan uh, must have got Mitch McConnell mad yesterday because he told uh, he told Martha you got to drain the swamp. He said that in that interview. Uh, Steve Bannon on 60 Minutes. Uh, and I also think as much as Steve Bannon says I was against the DACA move, he says, I understand why the president did it. I understand why he didn't just nullify. He gave it a six-month uh, delay to work something out because he's trying to get something If he's out. right. Why wouldn't Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan want to be on board with the Republicans? Are they scared? They're fearful for their political agenda, for their political future? They don't want to side with the president? Uh, well, the look, at, look at the agenda. Essentially, health care died in the U.S. Senate under the, uh, you know, on the watch of Mitch McConnell. You got to ask. Because your, of Senator John McCain. You got to ask. Your, I think there were more than that as well, but he was the only one they needed. So some other people didn't have to reveal their side. Uh, going forward, who's on the president's side and who is not in his own party? I think it's going to be very telling. All right. Uh, but they do have a right to their own opinion. And yeah, absolutely. Opinion. Yeah. Straight ahead. What's the next for move for Republicans after the president crosses party lines to make the deal with the Democrats? We're going to be joined by Congressman Jim Jordan next. President Trump meeting with House Speaker Paul Ryan just one day after striking a deal with Democratic leadership to raise, uh, to re raise the debt ceiling and give Texas $15 billion to recover. Can the president move his agenda forward with the current GOP leadership or does he have to move without them? Joining us right now is a man I know the president respects, House Freedom Caucus member Jim Jordan. Congressman, the president was frustrated. He acted yeah. that way. He is not upset that he did it. He actually feels, I think, emboldened because of it. Are you, are you okay with the move? Well, no, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a great plan for taxpayers. Anytime Nancy Pelosi likes something, it's probably not the best deal for the American taxpayer. But let's be clear here, Brian. Um, 
he didn't have many choices. You know, I, I learned a long time ago, lack of preparation typically leads to poor results. When you don't prepare you, and, and you have, you know, you, you're left with poor, dis, poor, uh, poor choices, poor options, uh, the president had to do something. So uh, the biggest problem was we didn't stay here in August and put together a debt ceiling plan, one that actually addressed the underlying $20 trillion debt burden that we, that we face as a country. So to me, that was, we, we took, Brian, we took the longest August recess break in a non-election year, the longest period, the longest break we've taken in over a decade. That's why the House Freedom Caucus called for nine weeks ago. Back in July, we said, stay in August. Right. Let's figure out the debt ceiling. Let's put together a tax reform plan, and let's figure out how we're going to repeal Obamacare. And instead, we went home for almost six weeks. Longest break in over a decade in a non-election year. Right. Crazy. Even though you guys passed a lot of bills, a lot didn't get done. You, you know, The Steve important stuff didn't get done. You can pass all the bills you want, but what do the American people want us to do? Build a border security wall, cut their taxes, and repeal Obamacare, and not keep adding to the debt without actually addressing the right. problem. So the, the, we, we haven't got the key things done. That's what the American people care about. You, you know, C. Bannon said uh, the establishment does not want to, Republican establishment does not want to see President Trump's agenda or President Trump be successful. Bring us inside the beltway. Is he right? I think there are a lot of folks in this town who aren't um, who aren't on board with what the American people elected Donald Trump as president to do and a Republican Congress to do. And we've got to overcome that. And it starts by actually making some decisions, taking the time to prepare and put together good public policy and then go have the debate. Then go have the debate with the American people. If we had an option out there, 